Hi, I'm Kirby Allison. Thank you for all your comments and questions that you guys have posted on our YouTube channel. After reading them all and answering as many as possible, I've selected five that we're going to feature in today's Q&A video. Each of these individuals I have selected will receive a complimentary pair of our Sovereign Grade shoelaces as a token of our appreciation for their participation in our channel. In today's Q&A video, I'm going to be answering your questions about how to care for Cordovan shoes. Remember, if you have any comments or questions while you're watching one of our videos, please ask them in the comments section below. I try to get back to as many of these questions as possible. Our first question today is from a Frederick Hesfeng, and it reads, uh, how do you strip clean a pair of Cordovan shoes, Reno mat, rubbing alcohol? Uh, I don't want to ruin my newly acquired vintage Crockett and Joan Bradford. So uh, first, Frederick, congratulations on those new Crockett and Joan uh, Bradford shoes. Crockett and Jones, as many of you know, is, is really one of the premier uh, shoemakers uh, operating out of the United Kingdom or Northampton. So uh, absolutely high quality, great pair of shoes. If you're really looking to strip the shoes, uh, you can absolutely use a product like the Saphir Reno Mat uh, completely uh, safely without any concern uh, on your Cordovan shoes. Uh, this is going to be a, a strong stripper. Uh, it's not gonna take any of the original finish off, especially off Cordovan, uh, but it will pull anything that's been placed on top of that leather off, any uh, polishes uh, or anything else. So uh, this would be my recommendation. Now, if you were looking for something more gentle, maybe say for occasional cleaning, uh, you could also use the Saphir leather cleaning soap um, without any concern either. You just would shampoo the shoe with the dauber. Uh, that's good for a nice light cleaning if the shoe becomes dirty. It'll take a little bit of the polish off, but it won't pull as uh, much as the Reno Mat uh, off of that shoe. Our second question today is from InfoKids, and it reads, how do I distinguish between a calfskin shoe and a cordovan shoe? Uh, so this really gets to the heart of the question of uh, what's the difference between calfskin and cordovan? Uh, and they really couldn't be any more different fundamentally. Calfskin is a leather, it's a skin of a cow. Uh, whereas cordovan is not skin, it's not leather, it's actually a membrane from a horse, uh, from the rear quarters or the uh, shells of uh, the horse itself. How is that different? Well, it's not a skin, so it doesn't have an open pore structure uh, like what you have with calfskin sho uh, shoes. Uh, and it's a tightly woven membrane that actually, during the tanning process uh, at Horween in Chicago, they actually roll and further compress the cordovan with glass bottles. And what that does is it further compresses and tightens uh, that fiber structure uh, to create the unique kind of cordovan look uh, and also to create you know, a, a leather that is, uh, just has an incredible longevity and durability. And that's really what cordovan is known for. So in terms of visually identifying a cordovan versus calfskin, there's a few things that you can look out for. First and most easily to identify is just that, you know, kind of iconic Cordovan number eight color. I mean, that's, you know, probably what 80% of Cordovan shoes are made out of. That's a beautiful kind of a burgundy. Um, and so that's the first thing I'd look for. Second, you know, Cordovan really has a unique just appearance to it. Um, you know, if you're looking at a Alden a Cordovan pair of shoes, it's treated so it has a high shine. Uh, but if you're looking at, say, a, a more naturally finished Cordovan, like something would, uh, that you would get from like an Edward Green uh, or a George Cleverly, it's going to have more of a matte finish. You know, the natural finish of Cordovan actually is not very shiny. You know, that Alden shine uh, that you see on their Cordovan shoes is actually an applied finish. And then the most technical way to really identify cordovan is to really pull the shoe up close and look at it. If you're looking at a pair of open grain leather calfskin shoes, you can actually see small dots or holes in the leather itself, and that's the pore structure. If you pull the cordovan up really close, you're not gonna see any of those open pores because cordovan is not an open pore leather. Cordovan shoes are incredibly unique. Uh, I've got a pair in my wardrobe, a pair of my Carmina boots I had made out of Cordovan. You know, it is a, kind of a, a cult leather. It has a, a really loyal followership uh, from people that love Cordovan. And Cordovan is just a unique and special material. It's not something that I'd have all my shoes made out of, uh, but it certainly is a, kind of a nice leather or nice material to have at least one shoe out of. 
Uh, question number three is from Simon Suris, and it reads, Hi Kirby, uh, thanks for this great video. Uh, I wondered, when should one choose shell, shell cordovan shoes? Uh, they come in many forms, ranging from the penny loafer to boots. Is there any advantage to go for this kind of leather instead of a more traditional calf leather? Uh, your insights would be much appreciated. Uh, kind regards from Brussels, Belgium. So thank you, Simon, for your question. Uh, you know, cordovan shoes, um, you know, really kind of fall into the category of uh, just kind of a, a cult classic. I mean, it's just a material uh, that is uh, more rare, it's more expensive than calfskin. Whenever cordovan shoes became popularized, it really was the de rigueur for, uh, you know, certain classes of lawyers because it was so easily uh, and instantaneously identifiable with that very special kind of burgundy color uh, that Horween cordovan leather is so well known for. And so, it's difficult to give a specific uh, answer. I mean, uh, cordovan is really appreciated in many ways because it's such a durable, long-lasting leather. I mean, it's incredibly strong and hardy because it's a membrane, it's not a skin. Uh, so it's just tougher, and a pair of cordovan shoes can easily last a lifetime if they're well cared for, uh, or even if they're not well cared for, uh, quite honestly. And so that is one of the things that really attracts people to cordovan. Now, in terms of which style uh, uh, would I choose or recommend, uh, you know, it really kind of depends on your personal preference. I mean, I have a pair of Carmina Cordovan boots. Uh, it's a cap toe balmoral. Uh, but, you know, a pair of Cordovan loafers uh, is uh, equally iconic. So I think it really boils down to how you're going to wear the shoes. I mean, if you're someone that wears a lot of loafers, um, then maybe go for a Cordovan a penny loafer from Alden. There's really no style of shoe that I'd say Cordovan isn't right for. Our fourth question today is from R7106. It's uh, on our World Championship in Shoemaking, our interview with Pete Bultitude at Gaziano and Gerling. Uh, and his question reads, am I naive in thinking cordovan shoes are made from leather of that color, that the color goes all the way through the leather, or is the color just applied to the surface during the shoemaking process? Uh, so great question. I mean, uh, certainly that iconic, uh, Horween kind of number eight cordovan uh, color is what most people associate with cordovan shoes, uh, but that is actually an applied dye to the leather. I actually had the opportunity to go visit the Horween factory back in June of this year, uh, and you can see from some of these photographs of the cordovan shells drying uh, that the natural color of cordovan is, um, you know, is actually a light brown. Uh, it's just a kind of an untreated leather uh, and is really similar in color uh, of a crust uh, calfskin. So any of the colors of cordovan that you're, you're seeing uh, made by a shoemaker, either it be the cordovan number no. eight, a black, dark brown, uh, is an applied dye. And our last question today uh, is really a more generic question and how should cordovan be cared for differently than calfskin? So again, cordovan is not a leather. It's totally different. It's a membrane uh, that is highly compressed and has a very tight pore structure. And so it's important that you care for your cordovan shoes differently than you would care for your calfskin shoes. Now, the reason that you don't want to use traditional uh, saphir shoe polishes uh, designed for calfskins is because the solvent of a standard shoe polish is designed to really penetrate into the leather to deliver those uh, nutrients. You really don't want to use a solvent-based shoe polish on cordovan shoes because you don't want those solvents penetrating into the cordovan membrane and causing that otherwise tightly compressed fiber structure to expand. Whenever you do that over time, you're actually compromising the integrity of that cord cordovan skin uh, because no longer are those fibers extremely tightly compressed. Um, so, uh, Saphir actually has a shoe polish that is designed specifically for cordovan. It's their cordovan uh, shoe polish, and it's a cream polish that we recommend for the primary care of your cordovan shoes. It's available in several different colors because, again, you can buy several different colors of cordovan leather. Uh, I've got right here, you know, the number eight, which, again, is the most iconic kind of cordovan color. Now, what makes this shoe polish different than, say, the Saphir Pomadier Medal d'Or cream polish is that it doesn't have any solvents. Uh, actually, the basis of this is Neat's foot oil, which is still going to condition and nourish that cordovan leather to keep it soft, uh, flexible, uh, and hydrated, but it's not going to uh, penetrate that uh, cordovan so deeply to cause those uh, fiber structures to expand. So it's a great polish. It's able to work up a nice soft shine in the same way that a cordovan cream polish would. 
uh, and is absolutely what we recommend here at the Hanger Project for the primary care of cordovan leather. Now that said, uh, a lot of cordovan aficionados really enjoy using the Saphir Renovator, and the Saphir Renovator Medallior is safe to use on cordovan leather shoes also uh, because it is water-based and not solvent-based. So again, uh, the mink oils will help condition and nourish the cordovan. Uh, it's got those soft waxes, which is going to provide a nice soft shine, uh, but it's not going to penetrate deep into that fiber structure uh, and cause the integrity of that cordovan leather to degrade. Now that said, any of these two polishes are going to provide a nice kind of soft shine. Uh, the natural texture of a cordovan pair of shoes actually is not a high shine. Uh, the Alden shoes that you see with that really high glossy finish, that's actually an applied finish that uh, Alden applies at the factory. The skins from the Horine Tannery, uh, even once they're finished, don't have a super high shine. So if you look at a pair of uh, Anthony Cleverly or George Cleverly Cordovan shoes, or even an Edward Green Cordovan shoes, or my Carmina Cordovan shoes, you actually see that there's a really kind of soft finish of the shoe. Now, if you're looking to elevate that shine even higher, I recommend using the Saphir Mirror Gloss. I mean, the only way you're gonna get the shine higher than with the cream polish is with the wax. And the reason I recommend the Saphir Mirror Gloss, which is an excellent wax polish for Cordovan, is because again, the mirror shine has that lower concentration of those solvents, right? So this is safer to apply to your Cordovan leather shoes uh, than the Pat Deluxe. So anyone that's looking to develop a mirror shine or a higher shine on their Cordovan shoes, uh, I'd recommend you know one or two applications of Mirror Gloss uh, using our Hanger Project High Shine Chamois and a little bit of water, and you'll see that you're able to elevate the shine of your Cordovan shoes. Now the other item that is essential for Cordovan care, uh, which is really quite uh, obscure, uh, is the deer bone. Now the deer bone actually uh, is strikingly easy to use and very effective. Now, because cordovan is a membrane, uh, you often see uh, enhanced or increased wrinkling across the vamp of the shoe, kind of as that fiber structure, you know, is flexing. Uh, much more so than what you would see on a calfskin pair of shoes. Now, cordovan is a very uh, tough leather, uh, and so you can use the deer bone to actually push those creases out of the leather. Uh, and so you rub this, you know, apply some pressure. We actually have an entire video showing you how to do this. And it's very effective uh, at uh, smoothing those creases out and really kind of a, uh, restoring that natural texture of the cordovan leather. And the deer bone has natural oils in the bone itself, which is gonna just help lubricate that bone and then also further nourish the cordovan leather. For any questions on how to care for cordovan leather shoes, we have an extensive uh, library of videos showing you exactly how to do that. And if you don't own a pair of cordovan shoes, you know, I recommend at least considering one pair for your collection. Uh, all of the products you need to take care of your cordovan leather shoes, of course, are available on hangerproject.com, uh, as well as extensive shoe care tutorials showing you exactly how to use these to ensure that your cordovan shoes look great for decades to come. You know, once again, I'd like to just take a moment to thank everyone for their comments and questions. As I always say, it's your engagement on our YouTube channel that make these Q&A videos possible. Not only do these Q&As give me the opportunity to answer in greater depth a lot of the questions that I'm already answering, but they allow me to take a moment to just acknowledge my appreciation of everyone's involvement in this channel. I absolutely enjoy YouTube and how it has allowed us to connect more directly with all of you and I really have fun interacting with you and answering your questions on our channel. If you haven't taken an opportunity to ask a question or make a comment, I invite you to do so. Even if you don't have any questions to ask, you just sharing your opinion or your thoughts about our content just make this more fun for everyone. I read all those questions and comments personally and really do enjoy getting back to as many of them as I possibly can. In today's video, I'm wearing a W.W. Chan uh, Zanya sports jacket. W.W. Chan is a bespoke tailoring house based out of Hong Kong that travels extensively throughout the United States uh, and has a pretty good product. Uh, of course, I'm wearing it with my trademark white Charvet shirt, and today I'm wearing a yellow silk Drakes of London tie. I'm also wearing a green silk Drakes of London pocket square. The trousers I have on today are a pair of khaki chinos made from my tailor or him or Johnny Brothers. And I had these made uh, with a high waist and tab trousers so that I don't have to wear them with the belt. I'm wearing a pair of my Sovereign Grade socks and my beautiful bespoke George Cleverly Russian Reindeer Split Toed Derbies. 
Since today's outfit is slightly more casual, I'm wearing it with my Rolex Datejust that was a gift from my grandfather. If you enjoyed this video, give us a thumbs up and please subscribe to our channel and turn on your notifications by clicking the bell to the right of the subscribe button so that you can learn whenever we release new videos. If you have any questions or comments about anything we discussed on this video, please ask them in the comments section below. And of course, please visit hangerproject.com where we have the largest, most comprehensive collection of luxury garment care and shoe care accessories in the world, as well as many other incredible products for the well-dressed. And while you are there, subscribe to our newsletter to receive notifications of new product launches, promotions, as well as a weekly digest of all the videos we publish here on our YouTube channel. I'm Kirby Allison, and we love helping the well-dressed take care of their wardrobes. Thank you.